Hey guys, how's it going? So it is a gorgeous day out today. It's chilly, but it's beautiful. Look at the snow. It did snow very lightly this morning, kind of on top of our already couple inches that we had. And then it's supposed to start snowing again this afternoon. So we'll see what happens. We might even be able to show you some of that in the video today. But I've got a couple of things I wanted to do. We're going to start in the front sun porch. And we're going to be working on a simple evergreen wreath that I picked up for $15 at the grocery store. And we're going to try to elevate it using things that you can also buy at the grocery store. And I just thought it might be fun to show you guys this process because I realize that not everybody lives 45 minutes away from a forest where you can go harvest rose hips and branches and all these beautiful things. Or maybe you don't even have a really great local garden center that um, carries things during the winter time. Maybe it's a, the type of garden center that closes down for the winter. I mean, I feel very blessed that we have all of those resources so nearby us where I can pick up beautiful things. But for those of you who don't have that, there are some really simple things you can get at the grocery store to make your wreaths look really amazing. And also sometimes we get to this point in the season where what? 10 days away from Christmas right now. And I don't really feel like making another wreath. <laughs> I feel like doing something very simple, but I want something on the chicken coop. I haven't put anything on the chicken coop other than there's Christmas lights. And I really like to have a wreath on the door. So I thought this would be a really good solution, something really inexpensive, something that won't take very long. And then when we're done with the wreath, Aaron Benjamin and I are gonna take you out to the front of our property to show you an update on the power pole removal project because it is almost done. There's like tiny little details they have to wrap up, but the biggest poles are gone and it's amazing the difference that it's made. So we're up in the front sun porch. I do have a heater running, so hopefully it's not too loud, but it makes it bearable. And I'm also in the middle of a mail time so it's a total mess in here but here's the wreath pretty basic this is what it looked like when I picked it up $14.99 I'm going to be removing the bow I might use the pine cones it's funny that they only use two like why not use one more to balance it they kind of look like eyeballs or something at this point but I did check all the wreaths over this one felt pretty darn fresh the only thing that's dry on this is this piece here this is a piece of juniper so I always try to find wreaths without juniper because it tends to just like dry up and fall apart the quickest and it looks the worst when it's dry. And then I've got my uh, glue gun. This is a cordless one. I was sent this. It's Nylio is the brand. I've been asked that quite a bit. So long as I remember to keep it charged, it's awesome. It does hold a charge for a long time. Like I could probably do two or three wreath projects with just one charge. And then this is the color of ribbon I'm using. Let's see if it says what color it is. I got it at Joann's. I'm not sure it says an actual color. Anyway, I favor this color over that color this time of year. And then my felt goes. And then in terms of other things you can add that you can just pick up at the grocery store and maybe do a little bit of pre-work, our oranges, dehydrated. These were dehydrated in my dehydrator. And these right here are from last year. These were dehydrated in the oven. You can see the difference in color, but it might look good to use both because um, those almost look like they came from a blood orange. I've got dehydrated pomegranates, which you can use fresh. If you live in a cold enough environment, you can wire in little cutie oranges, small pomegranates, and they'll just freeze. And they typically look pretty good on wreaths for the entire season. These are from last year and I let them just sit in this basket and they just eventually dried out. Got lucky, they look pretty darn good. Coarse cinnamon stick bundles are always a classic, especially when you pair them alongside some oranges. And you can use these from year to year. In fact, these I used last year. You'll even see some wreath remnants from last year. And then I do have some pine cones, which I picked up from underneath one of our trees. But typically you can find bagged pine cones at a craft store or at your grocery store um, fairly easily. And then we've got some nuts and things like that. Walnuts and other kinds down there. So the process is pretty simple. Basically you just strip the wreath of the things you don't like on it and then you start rebuilding. Um, and it's just fun that it already the base is done because that part can be the most time consuming. Um, and I do want to keep it fairly natural. I mean all the ingredients I brought out here can be purchased at a grocery store and they're all natural ingredients. I'm, I do have a few more things upstairs, some seed pods and things like that I can incorporate that could be purchased at a craft store. So we'll just see how this process goes. I'm just going to set up a camera and get after it. Look at that. That looks a hundred times better than it did 
when we started out. I can't even believe it. It's so beautiful, all the color and the texture. And it took 15 minutes. <laughs> That's all. And I realized as I was gluing these things on that some of you are probably like, well, it's great that you have dried oranges and pomegranates like ready to use. That does make the process really fast and easy. And that's the thing, like you make the time investment one year to dry all the fruit. And if you store it properly, you know, sealed in a dry location, it will last from year to year to year. All of these elements will. The cinnamon sticks, the pine cones, the nuts, you can pull them all off the wreath. You can use them from year to year, which is a really fun way because it's a no waste sort of situation but you don't have to use those sorts of things. Like if you're kind of tackling this project now, like you wanna make a wreath for somebody as a gift, but you don't have time to invest in drying oranges uh, and things like that, then you can just use cinnamon sticks and nuts and you can, if you're in a cold enough climate, you can just wire in fresh fruit. You know, you can wire in the little cutie oranges or small pomegranates. It's not a bad idea though to pick up pomegranates this time of year when they're at the store and then get them dry and just set them somewhere really dry. I do have the climate here, the dry climate to get it done fairly easily. Not all of mine dried perfectly, but most of them did pretty good. And for the dried oranges, you don't need any fancy equipment. You can do it in your oven. My oven goes down to 200 degrees and I have to put them in for about two and a half to three hours at 200. You have to flip the orange slices every like 30 to 45 minutes so they dry evenly. I found that the dehydrator makes them look a lot nicer and it's a little more consistent. So I dried those at 135 degrees Fahrenheit for eight hours and got that really beautiful jewel tone orange look. Um, but yeah, it's just one of those things you can kind of make to your own taste. If you do have things out in your garden, you can always incorporate seed heads and berries and things like that. But I really just wanted to show you a wreath where you could purchase everything at a craft store or at the grocery store. So we're gonna take this beauty out to the chicken coop. You can see I already have a ribbon wrapped around. In fact, I left kind of like a little avenue uh, with nothing in it, no, no uh, adornments, so that I could hang this by a ribbon. I'm gonna actually hang it on the back side of the door. I'm gonna nail it, I think, to the door. And then I've made a bow, which I haven't fluffed or anything. It's a very rough bow, but I think I might glue that on the front after I manipulate it. It's hard to tell until you pick the wreath up whether or not it's even done, like if there's any holes anywhere or whatever. But I just think it is gorgeous. I left the two original pine cones in there and then everything else was just, yeah, easy. Easy to glue in, nothing's wired in. Okay, so let's take this out to the chicken coop and get it hung up. And here it is, isn't it beautiful? Can you believe that that all started out with a wreath, pre-made wreath that was $14.99. And really the other ingredients, fairly inexpensive at the grocery store, especially if you take into account that if you dry them and store them, you can use them from year to year. So it's not a waste. You're not just like throwing money at a wreath for one year. You can utilize the stuff from for years to come. I love the color of this ribbon so much. I think it's so bright and I think it's just a nice alternative to the red. I get kind of tired of seeing, I mean, I like the red ribbons too, but I get kind of tired of seeing it and like something a little bit different. I am just so pleased with how this looks out here. I mean, everything I think looks pretty cute on this chicken coop. You can't really go wrong. I've just loved the whole thing from the very beginning. And the chickens are all nice and snug in here. We've got their whole run plexiglassed in. So when you come in here, you can see it's nice and dry. Hey chickens. One of my girls is molting over there. There they all are. So she just got done molting and now she looks beautiful. I've been giving them some high protein stuff and some food that's special for molting chickens. And now this poor one over here started to molt. You can kind of see some black feathers around, but everybody's looking pretty good. And I still have radishes and greens and stuff underneath the um, little protective covers that I've got over my raised beds in the garden. So they've been getting fresh treats every day as well. But, oh, I love that the coop is all ready for Christmas now. One little last look. I guess I should probably explain how I hung it. So I ran the ribbon over the top of the door and then just tied it off on a screw that's just sticking out on the inside of the door over there. In fact, I'll show you. You might be able to see that. See, there's a screw that was just in the door and I just tied it in a double knot around that screw. Russell, what are you doing in here? <gasps> oh, you sneak. You got in here when I opened the door. Bad kitty. Those chickens would take you out, bud. 
They're pretty fierce. All right, so now we want to head up and give you an update on the pole removal project. Aaron was getting Benjamin all dressed up in his snow clothes. <gasps> Are you ready? Yeah. You need to get your gloves. Let's go in and get your gloves quick and your hat. Oh, I'm a hat. And your hat. Uh, oh, true. You can wear your hood if you want, bud. Oh, perfect. So let's get your mittens, okay? Oh, well, your daddy has them. Yeah, Look at put that. Your mittens on. All right, you ready to go outside and play in the snow? Okay. Okay. Come on, babe. Okay. So cute. He's moving a lot better now. Yeah. He's getting used to those pants. Okay, so we're on the west side right here. You can see just from first glance the big poles that were here and here are gone. The wires are gone. Oh, it's like a breath of fresh air. You can see that we still have a half size pole here, which um, we do have to leave a portion of it. Let me get a better view. Hold on. Okay, so you can see the boxes that are on the poles. Those are for the irrigation pump house for the subdivision. So we have to leave those obviously, and they will be covered by Arborvitas. But when the electrical company comes back, which, do you know when they're coming back? Nope. Not that it really matters at this point, as but long as they get done before spring. Yeah. So they're gonna come back and they're gonna cut this pull down to the top of the boxes. So that will no longer be sticking up. And I don't care that that's still there at all. <laughs> Benjamin, it's beautiful out here. Isn't it beautiful? What do you see? <laughs> And then as I pan around to the front of the house, you can see that there's no longer any wires. The pole is gone from right here. And the pole that was in between our two neighbors lots is also gone. We just went ahead and had the whole, kind of like the whole shooting match done. You may as well. If they're coming out to do the work, it doesn't, I don't think it's much different to go one more pole down. Yeah, it's just one more pole. And it improves everybody's property values. Yeah. And it was cheaper for us just to do it now than to have the whole crew back out, like, or if they wanted to do it later, yeah. it would cost them a lot more. So anyway. So I'll walk out into the new property here in just a minute to give you a view of the whole front of the house without the poles. But we did set up cameras and we tried to capture as much of the process as possible. I think at least enough to give you an idea of what the process is like. Um, they were here Monday. They started on a Monday and they ended on a Friday. And some of the days they were here really long hours. So we couldn't be out here the whole time videotaping what they were doing and they were really nice about letting us just kind of get in there and get close to what they were doing and they were just yeah they were really nice to work with oh look here they come idaho powers back right now as we speak i can't believe that they showed up right now when we were giving the tour they actually he came back to clean up the little hole that they left he just wanted to do a little bit of cleanup so i'm gonna let him do his thing he's gonna get that big machine down and it's gonna be loud so um i will come back out here later and we'll go over the whole process all right, so the Idaho Power guys are still over there working, but I thought I would run out here onto the other end of the property uh, before we lost light so I could go through this whole process with you guys. Um, and I also want to show you this corner too and show you what a sector box looks like. The snow is picking up, so we're going we're gonna to put on our hood for the rest of this. So what they did first was they dug a trench, and it was really, really long, like five to 600 feet, I want to say. I'm really bad at judging distances, but it was long. They followed the natural line of the poles um, and it was about three to four feet deep probably on the four foot side of things i'm guessing and at the bottom of that trench they ran two lines of conduit uh, one for a power line and one for a cable line and they did it fast i think they had that whole trench dug the conduit run and the trench filled back in by the end of one day it might have been a day and a half i'm not sure it was such a fast process like for me, digging a trench that long, it would have been a week-long project, even with the equipment, and I probably would have broke stuff. But they're so good at what they do. I mean, you can tell that they do it all the time. But they don't run any of the cable lines through either one of the lines of conduit until they have the trench filled back over, which was nice because the trench kind of went through our main lane right here, like it crossed over through that. So they did that part really, really fast. And then um, after they have it filled back in, they start pushing cable line through one of the lines of conduit. The power company goes first, they push all of their line through, um, but at that point, they do the switch over. So they can take the power line off the pole or cut that line, and they can tie it into what's run underground. And they did have our power off for about an hour and a half, two hours. There were a few of our neighbors that were affected by it, that they were all notified. Everybody knew that it was going to happen. They did it really fast. It really didn't affect 
any of us hugely. So after they had our power back on, they were able to take the big power line, like the tallest one down, and that like immediately made things look better. And then the power company cuts the power pole from the point where you know the wire attached on top right to the top of where the cable line is so they're taking off i don't know how many feet that is but the top like third of the pole comes down that day and then after that point the cable company comes they push their cable through the conduit that's open they do the same thing they do the switch over and then after they're done doing the switch over they're able to take the cable line down and then the poles get to come all the way out of the ground. And that process was fun to watch. So there was a truck in here that has like this arm and it comes in and it holds onto the pole kind of up top and then they chain around the bottom and they start rocking it. They start rocking the pole. I mean, it was kind of a slow-ish process. I'm kind of like, I just want to see them pop out of the ground. But I could see, like, I could see a lot of things going wrong. Like they know what they're doing. So I sat out here in a truck, in our one of our trucks actually, and I just watched. I just watched them just like gently rock these poles and then they would just eventually pop out of the ground and oh it was just glorious to see them come down so four poles is what we had taken down and one of them was right here by the mulberry in fact let me just turn the camera around now so this is the entrance the old entrance to our property before we owned this piece in front this is where the short fence was where all the uh hay racks were with all the flowers. We left that one post just for now because there is an electrical outlet underneath that fake rock. We didn't want anybody to hit it until we're ready to stop driving here because all of this is going away. Right here, the fence, not the trees. Big trees will stay. But the fence, the driveway here, this will all be grass that connects to our grass up by the house. Um, so you're only, the only way you'll be able to go is straight through here. But anyway, there was a huge pull right here, huge. Like just the view right here, looking at the mulberry without that pole is so beautiful. I just love it so much. The other pole was right about here and we just figured, you know, we can still see it when we're driving down our lane. The guys have all the equipment here. It's not gonna add that much more cost to take one more down. It would be way more expensive to have, to have them come back out and do it again, especially because they had to put sector boxes in. So you can see right here, this is actually an easement. We actually own the property on the other side of the fence, like eight feet of it, but it's an easement. So that's the property line. So it goes down our neighbor's property a bit, but the power also does. So we couldn't do anything with it anyway. Um, so we don't care about where the fence line is it, either way. This is where they put the sector box so that we can access power or our neighbors can if they want to develop anything over here. You can see we're gonna have to do a little bit of fence repair. It'll be easy. I think we'll take this post out and just connect this one to that one. And they did cut through right here, which they are going to replace that. So they cut through the fence so they could get their equipment through. Um, but eventually we'll have, you know, solid fence here, here, and then it'll just, you know, just make this little jog in the corner. And then we did show you earlier this week, we removed the concrete barrier uh, and it does, I mean, that tree is kind of imposing here. It is big, it is kind of like in the lane, but not, but we think once we slough all this soil off all the way to the trunk, it'll look less like, less in the driveway. <laughs> That makes sense I don't know and I'm not sure if I'm gonna do like a little flower bed right in here with some fun stuff kind of blocking the view toward the other house um, not that we need to it's a nice house but um, it might be nice just to have some like pretty pretty things or I might get a couple more pots so I would need two more like one here and one right here I don't know we'll see the other ones the other poles were down here huge one right um, by where we were standing earlier. And then there was one in the corner by our pear tree that was all leaning over. That was probably the worst one <laughs> because I just, I felt like it was just gonna fall down. It looked like it was going to anyway. But anyway, here's the view from the lane. No power lines. And then I'm gonna walk out into the property a bit. So it started out one guy from the power company. Now there's four guys over there. I don't know what they're doing. So Idaho Power is the people who, they are the ones who service our area, even though we are in Oregon, but we're right on the border. And they service the better part of our region over here. We had a lot of questions about that, like why Idaho Power would be at our house when we live in Oregon. So nice, fresh walk out here in the snow. Well, let's just stop midway. So we can see here. Oh, 
having that opened up, it just, it already makes the property feel more connected because that just visually blocked the back part of the property off. Such an amazing difference, amazing, I'm so thankful. Okay, now I'm gonna walk over here. And how wonderful that they were able to get it done like two days before this weather hit. Um, I think they can still probably do projects, but boy, I don't know like what the, the, the line is, like how much snow is too much or how frozen the ground is, all of that stuff. We didn't have to deal with any of that. It was a beautiful last week. Actually walking on our new lane right now, which is really hard to distinguish when you can't see any barriers, any lines anywhere. And there we go. So I'm standing on the new lane. There's the house. No power lines. Oh, so, so, so satisfying. You know, I look back at pictures when we first moved into this house and I almost forget some of the things that we've done. Like the two, there were two great big dead trees um, on the outside of our property, like on the outside of our entryway. And they were just dead. <laughs> I don't know how long they had been dead, but they were every bit as tall as the mulberry. And they were just, they were flanking the opening of our home. And that was one of the first things we had removed. And I almost like kind of forget about those things. We've come a long way. That's just one of the reasons I'm thankful we make videos because it's almost like a journal, a garden journal. You can go back and be like, oh yeah, I remember I had that huge juniper shrub or whatever removed and um, how much different it looks now. It's so fun to see the changes. And here we are a little bit more to the left. It would be pretty awesome if that big truck wasn't there. <laughs> Cause that's, you can see, well, that shows you where the driveway comes out. So our driveway, kind of comes right alongside that big juniper and it just comes right down through here. So all of this right here, we plan to do huge expansive lawn and shade trees, flower beds. We want it to look kind of park-esque right there. Like probably more open space than not because the two other corners, so there's this corner here and then I'm trying not to move too quickly. Uh, this corner right over here, which is really big, they, they are gonna be heavily planted with walking paths and just flower beds, no grass. And then of course the back corner is our cut flower garden slash, slash orchard. My mouth is starting to be frozen at this point. Well, that was good timing. Now we can see it all opened up. So anyway guys, that's it for today's video. I was super excited to be able to update you on this power pole project because it's been such a long time coming. At first it was just a dream of ours that we thought we would never, that it, we, it would never happen because we had no idea the costs involved and the infrastructure. We never knew if we would ever own this piece of property or not and things have just kind of fallen into place and we're just so thankful for it. Um, it's gonna allow us the opportunity to do so much more gardening and so much more sharing of projects with you guys, which we find so much joy in doing. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video, seeing the wreath and the update. Now I'm gonna go inside out of this weather. Hope you guys are all having a great day. See you in the next one. Bye.